Hey, what's up everybody? I hope you are not too bored with your life right now, and I hope that you haven't completely exhausted your Netflix or Disney Plus accounts. If this is your 12th time through the office, you need to go outside, or if you have watched the same anime show for the last uh, two days in a row, you need to go do something, like read a book or something, but get out of your house, go do something fun. Um, I, 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 want, I know that some of you are working extra hours right now. I know some of you are uh, working out a little more or some of you are just sitting on your couch eating all of the extra food that your parents have bought over the last few weeks. But I just want to connect with you and let you know a few things about what our church is doing for the time being. So um, we're to take things week to week. I know that some of you uh, had activities scheduled this weekend. So 9th, 11th, and 12th grade was all supposed to be doing things this weekend and those have been canceled. I'm sorry about that. Uh, 10th grade, you have one scheduled for next week, going to Fish and Loaves and stuff. I'll let you know what's gonna happen with that, but it looks like that's probably gonna be canceled as well. Um, I, I think as we go through this and we try to figure out what our, our church is gonna look like over the next few weeks, it's important for you guys to be part of this process. And so I want you to understand the fact that church has never ever been about having a cool space to meet, nor has it been about hopping in a van and, and going to run around and, and do stuff or get food. And while those things are great, um, and, and I enjoy them as much as anybody else does, um, we can't do those things right now. But our responsibility to the gospel, our responsibility to each other hasn't changed at all. And uh, matter of fact, I think that our inability to get together actually means that you have more work to do uh, than you did before when it comes to your faith and helping the people around you. So I, I want you either today or tomorrow, uh, whenever you're watching this, to read Acts chapter six, seven, eight, and nine. It's the story of a guy named Stephen. He was one of the first deacons from the, the first church in Acts. Uh, just to kind of give you a little background to his story, uh, right after they made this guy a deacon, a lot of the Jewish leaders in, in Jerusalem in the first century began to really persecute the church, literally going house to house, arresting people for their faith. Um, and, and the story of Stephen here is really one of him struggling with that, dealing with that. He's arrested, he has to answer to the uh, governing body about why he believes what he believes. But something really interesting happens in Acts chapter eight, and I wanna read it to you. So Acts chapter eight, verse number one, it says, and Saul approved of his execution, because they were, they were gonna kill Stephen. And there arose on that day a great persecution against the church in Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Devout men buried Stephen and made great lamentation over him, but Saul was ravaging the church and entering house after house. He dragged off men and women and committed them to prison. Now those who were scattered went about preaching the word. And that's where I wanted to focus just for a couple minutes today. Now, these people are being forced out of their church. They have to leave their homes for very different reasons than ours. Um, you get to stay in your home, but you don't get to come to church. Um, what's interesting to note about this whole story is that when these people are forced out of their church, when they're forced out of their normal, they take the gospel with them wherever they go. And it's at this point that the church begins really to grow across the, the Mediterranean world right there is as people are forced out of their place, they have to change how they do things. And that's a little similar to how we're doing things now. We can't meet here, we can't do what we normally do, but you have an opportunity to reach people in a way that you didn't just a couple of weeks ago. Um, uh, the, the question for me becomes as we look at this is, is were we doing anything in the first place? So these people were already living out the gospel. They were already doing what they were supposed to do in their relationship with Christ. And so when they moved, that just became part of what they did. But for us, it's a little different. And so um, I think that we have a responsibility to help share hope right now where we are. Uh, to some people, especially older people, you are like the plague. As a student, you are a carrier of the disease. So they want you home. They don't want you hanging out with anybody. Um, but everybody your age, and I mean everybody your age, is currently at home with absolutely nothing to do. And so uh, the question I have for you and I wanna talk about with you is how can we reach those people right now? What can we be doing to engage the kids and the students that are like you that are at home bored out of their minds? And so I got a couple things that I want you to do this week and uh, I want you to, to post about them on our social media when you get a chance to do that. So first things first, I want you to reach out to a friend of yours who is not a Christian, they don't go to church, and I want you to invite them to do something with you. I don't care whether you game online together, um, you break the rules and you go to over each other's houses or something, or you just reach out and, and text with them during the day or whatever it is you do to, to communicate with them. I want you to reach out to somebody who doesn't know Christ and just begin to open that conversation with them this week. Number two, I, I want you to offer or go do something nice for one of your neighbors. 
I don't care if you haven't met them before or not, or if they think you're weird or not, either go knock on their door and just ask them if they need any help while they may be off work. I'm gonna ask you particularly to, to go after maybe elderly neighbors or people that you know that work a lot in your neighborhood. Now, obviously you need to be careful with that. Maybe leave a note on their door or something that, that says you're willing to help them. Um, a lot of older people are not gonna answer the door just because again, they think you're the plague. Um, but uh, I want you to do something for your neighbors. So try to at least offer to help, but go engage them somehow. Number three, if you have a YouTube channel and you do this regularly, I need to talk to you in ASAP. So please get in touch with me, text me. My number is 937-508-6926. And I would love to talk with you because I need your help. I want to do some cool stuff, but I can't do it by myself. Lastly, and most importantly, I want you to read a couple things. I want you to read Exodus chapter 19 and chapter 20, and I want you to read Mark chapter 6. These are things that over the next couple of weeks we're going to be talking about. And so I would like you to go ahead and read them so that as we get some things going, you can, you can discuss them with us. So make sure you watch Pastor Riley with your family this weekend. We're going to have a lot of cool stuff going on with that. And uh, stay tuned for more stuff from the revolution. We're going to have a good time. See ya.